a bit of a collection of the tools that you want to have to have a successful year in FTC. Um, I guess we can start with the Allen wrenches. There are many different flavors of Allen wrenches. You can get ones that are shaped like a screwdriver or a T or the straight up ones that you normally see, like a kind of like a hook, I guess. Uh, there's also ones with uh, chamfered rounded tips and ones with flat tips. Um, uh, what's good about these is that you can come in from an angle to uh, loosen your nuts and your, your uh, screws and whatnot. Okay. Another thing in that kind of a, a group is you, you want to have a couple of different types of screwdrivers. Um, these specifically are, are the perfect size for um, doing uh, the screws on the most, hold on, in the motor controller uh, is the perfect size for loosening the terminals and tightening the terminals. So you're going to want to have a flathead screwdriver like this, if only for this reason. Another thing that's going to be important in your toolbox is to have a couple different types of pairs of pliers or maybe even a raw vice grip. <laughs> um, these you can use, like, if you have a particularly stubborn, then you could uh, use these to grip onto it. And so it you locks. Can, uh, and this one also, the vice grip also, also locks. So that even gives you less room for error when you're trying to undo a screw. And also, if you need to, like, especially with this locking one, say you're putting in some screws, you need two pieces to be tight together, then you can use your vice grip and tighten it with this on the back, and then you can have those together. Okay. Um, another thing that's going to be important is to have a wire stripper. Um, uh, there are many different types of wire strippers that you can get. Uh, this one happens to have a wire cutter, uh, a wire stripper, and a wire crimper all in one. But you can get each of those tools separately. What we'll be using for FTC here is a 22 gauge wire. Uh, which you, uh, just one thing you want to remember about uh, about wire is that uh, as the number goes up, uh, your wire gets thinner. The circumference decreases. And like say 14 gauge wire is thicker than this and 10 gauge wire is even thicker than this, but uh, 23 gauge wire is thinner. Okay, now for your wire stripper, usually it has different sizes. It'll, it'll, say, it'll say the gauge number for each uh, spot that it's for. Uh, this one just has something. But you can always just test it to uh, make sure what you're going to strip. But first, before you um, go to strip your wire, uh, there we go, you're going to want to take off any imperfections. You see, that's kind of gross. It's all messed up and everything. Now, you could use a wire snip, or we could use our wire cutter on here. I'll just show you the wire snip. So that it's easier. And you just give it a snot. Okay. Now, I'll zoom up a little bit so I can strip this. You just theft it for me. Okay. Now, most wire strippers work the same way. You push it in, you uh, give it a squeeze, and then you pull your wire, and then you see here uh, the part, the red part comes off, and then we have our actual wire exposed. It's all silver and nice, and this is the the exposed part is what you're going to put in your terminal. Now this is a little long, and in that case, I can just go ahead and trim it just a little bit, so it's like that, and it'll go in much easier. And if you still have difficulty getting into the terminal, like if your wires are fraying, because they are very thin, then what you can do is you can twist them like this, and then they're just one big poking needle. And then when you put it in, you're not going to have that difficulty. Okay. Also, um, just one thing to remember about these is um, red wires are positive and black wires are negative. Okay. While we're on the subject of wires, uh, zip ties are a very important uh, tool in everything, especially uh, wire management. Uh, you could use these pretty much, 
pretty much anywhere where you, uh, hold on, let's uh, bring it over to the back spot so we can show some places where you might use. This is not an FTC bot, but this is a good to give you an example of places you might use zip, zip ties. Uh, some people also call them tie wraps. Wire ties. Etc. Wire ties, etc. But this is what they look like, and this is them in action. To hold motor controllers? Yeah. Uh, like over here, this motor is stable too. Stabilize the zip tie. Um, and down here, how you have the battery secure instead of a. This is a giant zip tie, it's not even a cable. See, zip ties come in all lengths, all sizes. You can get some really, really big ones. Like this one, for example. This is a zip tie managed with another zip tie. It's a zip tie inception. See, that one's pretty pretty long. It won't even fit on the camera. And you can see how thick it is, like, compared to my finger. And look, it's got a giant space. It gets a lot bigger. And they get even bigger than that. Okay. Now, to show you how to utilize a zip tie, here, Paul, why don't you? Okay. Since I'm somehow holding the camera now. <laughs> you, you put the long end into the box shape looking thing and you pull it through. And when you hear the clicking, then that's when your zip tie is actually sealed. Uh, after it gets to the clicky part, it won't go back out unless you have like a reusable zip tie, but that's not what's in this kit of parts. And you basically just take your wire snips and Paul, you're filming. Okay. <laughs> you take your wire snips and Cut you trim off, off any excess. Just like that. Okay. Another important tool is your files. You're going to use that um, for robot inspection. If your robot has any jagged edges at all, you're not going to pass your robot inspection because it's dangerous. It could cut somebody. It could uh, harm something on somebody else's robots. It could even cut your own wires. So it's important to make sure you don't have any jagged edges. Um, now this here is actually a wood file, but it works just as well for metal. Uh, you can get these, any of these tools, by the way, at a Home Depot or on the FTC site, or even in the hardware section at Walmart or at Lowe's, basically your basic hardware store. Uh, anyway, to use a file, basically you're going to take, this isn't a jagged edge, this is a very clean edge, so technically I shouldn't be filing this. It's only going to make it worse. But pretend this is kind of jagged and I need to take off an edge. I would just file away at it like that. And you can see kind of how it affected it. Can you see that on the camera well? No. Well, you can see it kind of just took some chunks out. Also, like say if you had, um, say if this is a corner too. If this is just uh, came to a, a, just a major point. You could also take your file and round that off. Of course, this is already down, so it's not going to do much. Yeah. And when you do this, of course, you should be wearing safety glasses. Always. Always wear safety glasses. That's a very important part of FTC. Safety first, guys. Okay. Moving on to your bigger tools is your clamp. This is a C clamp, and this is a nom nom clamp. <laughs> What's it called? An adjustable clamp. Okay, it's an adjustable clamp. Now we'll talk about this one first. Um, this one has two levers, a reverse and a forward lever. Now when you push the forward lever, if you do one shot, it'll come out like that. And just hold it down. Or you could just hold it down and pull like and this. And it will slide. And for the reverse one, we'll uh, slowly bring it back up, or you can hold down your forward and push it. Now, say if I wanted to clamp something to this table. Let's clamp this other clamp to this table. I would just open it up using my forward, and then I would push it up so it's there, and then I wouldn't going to use the reverse lever to tighten it. Okay, now this isn't going anywhere. I can file this. I could uh, beat it with a hammer. Whatever I might need to do to a piece of metal, you want to clamp it to the table. It keeps it stable. It keeps it stable. 
You can even combine clamps if you need it. If you wanted this to not move, you can add another clamp right here. You'll have even more stability. This is especially helpful when you need to um, when you need to bend something like this or a part similar to this because this is actually the best part. And I meant this because that'll let you get a straight bend. And of course, I push my forward to take that off. Okay, now let's clamp this with the C clamp. Now, I don't like C clamps at all. No. Um, these you just use kind of takes forever. You need it's your screwy. And these these are really old too. These are from before we came in this school, so it's not very good. And then you're gonna come down here and twist it. It's kind of like the lock on the vice grip, and you're gonna clamp it like that. Yeah. See, those aren't even as, as reliable when you want to get a tight hold on it, but it works the same. And these are actually probably cheaper too, since mostly your rookie teams are gonna be on a small budget. So it's also something to consider. Um, okay, now, huh? I don't think we need to go over that. I'm just gonna talk about this real quickly. It's um, this is a special type of grabber. It's perfectly designed for holding the nut from FTC, and you can get this off of the website. Um, okay. Next thing is our mega forceps. We got these at a pet store. Um, <laughs> but these are really good if you want to, like, say, I had my channel up here, and there's, a, say, there's a nut down there, right here, that I want to get to. But there's a wall against here, so I can't <laughs> get my hand in there to get it. I could uh, bring my forceps down, use that to hold the nut, and then loosen it with my Allen wrench on this side. So these could be helpful anyway. And also, if you wanted to do a pulley system, this will also be good for helping to thread your um, your cord or whatever you choose to operate your pulley system throughout your uh, robot. Um, that's about it. Okay, for tools that we're going to demonstrate. Now, other things you want to have is, uh, at your disposal is several kinds of tape. We like to keep masking tape, painter's tape, uh, duct tape, of course, because duct tape does everything. And we even have shiny aluminum duct tape. Duct tape, uh, any kind of tape will always be helpful. So that's some, a must to have around. Um, another thing is a pair of scissors. And um, what else might we have? Oh, measuring tapes. Measuring tapes, definitely. Uh, because you want to make sure that you're in your uh, correct size. It's also good to have, like, a meter stick, too, because that'll give you a rigid one that you can use to uh, measure the size of your robot. Okay, and that's about it.